Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. I am running Mac OS Catalina, and I've in the past had Wi-Fi problems. If you're watching this, you maybe have had Wi-Fi problems or cutouts. It's sort of you have issues, you've got interference, you don't understand what's going on. We're gonna go through some of the built-in functionality into Mac OS Catalina to troubleshoot and diagnose issues with your Wi-Fi connection. So my name is Emilian, I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And we're gonna look at how to diagnose Wi-Fi issues, connectivity problems, do some basic troubleshooting on Mac OS Catalina. So let's just jump onto my computer right here. We are running, as I said, Catalina. We're gonna jump in and we're gonna go through what I generally like to look for and help you to uh, troubleshoot your Wi-Fi issues. So here we are logged into our MacBook Pro. We are running Catalina, uh, but this uh, so these steps will uh, really work the same in early versions of Mac OS and obviously later versions of Mac OS unless they change some major functionality. But before you even go into the more advanced uh, Wi-Fi configuration problems, so there's diagnostics and other tools that we can look at, the really the first step is to go and look through uh, your system preferences and check your wireless connection in the first place. Do some basic, basic troubleshooting before we then go and cover the advanced ones. So you can open up system preferences. I've got it here in my dock down the bottom left-hand corner, or you can go to the Apple logo and click on system preferences. And here you're presented with your standard uh, list of applications to uh, configure some things on your Mac. Uh, we're gonna go and open up the network setting. You'll have a few things. You'll have your Wi-Fi network along with a, a physical connection to your ethernet if you have one and Bluetooth as well. Status uh, is connected, okay? If yours says disconnected, then you're not connected to the network. So the first thing you need to try to do is obviously try to connect. Uh, that's really the first step that of uh, you checking uh, whether you can connect at all. Uh, looking at things such as automatically joining the network. So I've got a, a list of my network names, my Wi-Fi network names that I use. Uh, so is it automatically going to join to that or not? Um, you can click on then the advanced area. And under the Wi-Fi option, you've got a few different things. You've got all of the networks that uh, your computer has connected to in the past, including the one that it's connected to currently. If you select TCP IP right here, you really need to check first and foremost if you have a uh, IP address assigned. Um, one of the most common reasons that your uh, internet or your Wi-Fi is not working is because it has not gotten itself an IP address. Uh, the IP address is needed, a, uh, a real IP address is needed to be able to connect to the network to connect to the internet in the first place. In my case, I've got what's called using DHCP. So this is essentially a service uh, where your computer is gonna go out and scan the network, everything that is connected in your house, in your office. And in my case, it's got an allocated this IP address right here. So this IP address will change um, every so often. Sometimes it's a good idea to go and click renew DHCP lease. It's gonna remove the old settings and then go and try to reestablish a connection to that DHCP service. Now, if you're in a home environment, uh, that could be getting done via your router, um, your home modem router at home. Uh, could have DHCP turned on. Uh, if it does, great. If it doesn't, you may want to turn it on. That maybe is why it can't find a IP address. Uh, you could reset your home router, um, your modem at home to see if that fixes the problem. But if this is blank, even if it's on DHCP and this is blank and this is not getting itself an IP address, there's definitely a problem somewhere on your network that you're gonna to have to try to diagnose and troubleshoot. Um, it's likely to do with your router or whatever service is giving this DHCP address. So you need to go and fix that first. Another option is to go and set up a uh, manual address. For most standard users, uh, you don't wanna go and give yourself a static IP address um, unless you really know what you're doing. Um, so just leave it as DHCP and you should be fine. Something that's important is that the uh, router IP address is accurate. If this is not right, so if that is not your router's IP address, then it can't communicate to your router. DNS is what's gonna let you go and uh, find websites out on the internet. So you need to have this populated. If this is not populated, then that's possibly why you're having internet problems. So generally what you would do is the IP addresses listed in here would be IP addresses that have been given to you by your service provider. They could also be allocated automatically if this is set to DHCP. So if this is on DHCP, it could also be getting the DNS server 
uh, IPs from there. Otherwise, you can go and add a DNS IP right here. If you don't know what your service provider DNS IPs are, call them up, ask them, um, and, and they'll give them to you, and then you have to add those in there. Without these, you really won't be able to get much further. Something else you may wanna try is um, check the proxies. Um, sometimes people accidentally have these ticked and uh, you don't need to have them ticked unless you're actually using a proxy. So what I've seen very common is if you have a computer that you take to work and perhaps at work you are running a proxy, uh, web proxy could be ticked. Then when you get home, you don't have a web proxy. So it's trying to find the proxy server, which obviously at home you don't have running. So it's not going to be able to find uh, that proxy server. So you won't be able to get access to the network. So going and ensuring that uh, these things are unticked uh, would also help. Uh, unless you do have a proxy running at home. So that is the basic stuff covered. Uh, the next step is now let's look through the advanced features. So if none of that has actually fixed anything or has assisted you, uh, there are further diagnostic tools that we can now run. You'll see that if I just normally click on this Wi-Fi logo right here, all I'm gonna get is my Wi-Fi connection as well as some other Wi-Fi connections that have been detected that are close to me. If I click on the option key on my keyboard and then click on that, I'm presented with a lot more information, which includes uh, a lot more around my connection settings, my channel, my the noise that's on my network, the IP address, the router, a whole bunch of other things, which is really, really cool. And there are also three features available here. Enable Wi-Fi login, create, Diagnostics report and open wireless diagnostics. Enable Wi-Fi login, you essentially turn it on or off and that can be used for doing some troubleshooting later where you need to get logs from a specific, a specific time, a start time and an end time. Uh, then create diagnostics report. If I click on that, I'm gonna be provided with this uh, little notification screen and I click on OK and it's gonna go and after a few minutes, gather a whole bunch of information about my Mac, about my settings, about my Wi-Fi connections, and then save it to an actual file. We're not gonna be using this, we're gonna be doing it all via the actual tool. So I'm gonna cancel this because we can do this a different way. So again, option, click on here. We're gonna open up wireless diagnostics. We provided with a little bit of an introduction about this application. You'll see that it says that uh, upon completion of this assistant, a diagnostics report will be created in this particular location right here. By sending a copy of the report to Apple, you're consenting for Apple to use the content for such a report. So it's really gonna assist you because Apple's gonna see it and they're gonna be able to uh, look at some information. So from here, we're gonna click on continue. It then came back and said, my connection appears to be working correctly. Great, that may be the case, uh, but it's not always the case. Uh, sometimes it may be up and down. You could have intermittent problems. So there are two main options, monitor my Wi-Fi connection, continue to summary. So monitor my Wi-Fi connection is, uh, it's identified, look, uh, perhaps the problem was not detected now. So we wanna do some further troubleshooting. So if I click on continue, it's essentially turned on monitoring of my Wi-Fi. It's given my timestamp and uh, continue will stop the monitoring. So what you could do is if you know that there's you know connection problems around your house or it's intermittent, you can now leave this running for an X amount of time and then you can stop it if you want to stop monitoring your Wi-Fi connection. So I'm just gonna say continue. It's gonna give you a little warning. Are you sure you want to stop? Okay. Now that is uh, now gonna be collected as part of me creating my uh, diagnostics report. Okay, here optionally, enter any additional information about your wireless network below. When you're finished, click on continue. So I can actually say in here that my wireless router, my wireless router is in my kitchen. So that will then be appended into the report and then we're good. Now, before we do this, we're just gonna go start again. We're gonna go back to the very start. You'll find that clicking on continue to summary really comes up to the same same spot. The only difference being that it hasn't monitored your connection over that uh, time period where you started it and stopped it. Continue. So it's now gonna be creating a diagnostic report. This may take a little bit of time, but once it is finished, uh, it will save that report into the VAR TMP folder, uh, which we can look at how to access that in a little while. There are some excellent tools within the wireless diagnostics area right here that you can go and access and do quite a few things. Um, some are troubleshooting, others you can actually do a little bit more than just that. But in the wireless diagnostics, making sure that this is up on the top of your taskbar, you can click on the window section right here and you've got a number of 
uh, little applications around wireless diagnostics for you to troubleshoot and look up further information. Uh, the assistant is essentially this assistant right here, which we which is used for creating the diagnostics report. Info will show you information around your wireless connection. So this is sort of the same information that you get when you click on the option key and click on that uh, Wi-Fi logo, but that includes your IP address, your MAC address, some other things like that. The quality, the noise of your wireless connection as well. Logs, you can go and turn on login, enable or disable uh, background login. So this is really the same as you enabling and disabling Wi-Fi login right here. So if you do really want to go and do um, further diagnosis, you can turn on login for Wi-Fi, for EA poll and for Bluetooth as well. So for, in our case, it's Wi-Fi, you just click on here, throw in your password, uh, and then it'll start collecting the logs that are needed for that. Scan is a brilliant tool. So what this is now doing is this is scanning my Wi-Fi uh, networks that are close to me. Now, I don't have too many that have shown up. Really, I've just got two that I've got, which are my two gigahertz and my, two, and my five gigahertz uh, bands. The great thing about this is you can actually see information about those other Wi-Fi networks that are close to you. Uh, scrolling over to the right uh, includes the noise, the channel, the band that they're using, whether if it's 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. But something that I really like to look at is the channel. It's always best to use a different channel as far away as uh, the Wi-Fi networks that are perhaps around you. So if you are sharing channels or your channels are very similar to other Wi-Fi connections near you, go ahead and look at changing that. You can change your channel generally via your router, whatever is providing you your uh, Wi-Fi network. Uh, there's a setting in there to go and actually change that Wi-Fi channel. It will require generally a restart of your Wi-Fi connection. Performance here does give you a lot more information. Essentially, this window uh, shows you information about the Wi-Fi signal that your Mac is receiving. Uh, this includes the transmit rate, the signal to noise ratio over time, which is the quality. Uh, the signal, which is the RSSI, and the noise measurement over time. So uh, assuming you have a Mac uh, laptop, let's say, uh, you can walk around with it around your house to actually see the signal strength, the noise, and it should vary between different locations. So this can help you when you're finding, uh, say, wireless dead zones, you're having connectivity problems, to actually find where the, the strong spots are around your house, for example, or around your office. Then we've got the sniffer. Uh, the sniffer utility uh, allows you really to sniff the Wi-Fi signal uh, in the air. So you can capture nearby packets uh, and log them. So as soon as you click on start, it'll start to capture those packets. It'll monitor them uh, and save that log uh, with all the information that you need. And then you have a particular file that is spat out, a .wcap file that you can open up with tools such as Wireshark, uh, which will have to be done on a Windows computer, unfortunately, because there is no equivalent on the Mac. But um, it really does give you a lot more information uh, to be able to go and uh, see the, the packets that have been sniffed uh, from this uh, sniffer application. The other option is Sidecar, which is more to do when you've got an iPad connected uh, using the Sidecar functionality. So once the wireless diagnostics finishes, uh, you should be presented with this screen right here. Uh, you may not be. If it's still running, it's taking a long time and it appears to be frozen, don't worry. Uh, it still has probably saved that uh, diagnostics file in the right place. But right from here, you can review Wi-Fi best practices. You know, I've got three bars on here. So it has detected I'm a little bit far away from my wireless router, uh, which is a potential problem. But uh, right from here, I can say done. Uh, you'll see it's automatically gone to VAR, TMP and here is the wireless diagnostic file. If the finder hasn't automatically opened, you can manually do this by going to the finder up here, going to go, go to folder, and then manually putting in forward slash VAR, forward slash TMP and OK, and then that will enter into here. And this is the wireless diagnostics file. So if you are technical enough, you can go into here and start reading it, but there's gonna be a lot of stuff on here and uh, the average Joe, uh, may find it very hard to decipher a lot of the stuff that's in here. So what I would recommend is giving this file to Apple if you have ongoing wireless problems or somebody who is a wireless expert who can actually go and uh, understand uh, a little bit more about what is listed in there. So that's it. I hope you found this helpful. I hope I was able to assist you, give you some ideas and some help to troubleshoot potential problems that you may have 
on your Wi-Fi network, on your Wi-Fi connectivity. But look, either way, I would love if you commented, give me your feedback. I love to hear from you about how you went and give me your feedback as well. Uh, as well as that, please like and subscribe to Digital by Computing and click on that notification bell to keep up to date as I release new videos. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching again. We'll see you next time.